I am sitting here surrounded by piles of Chromebooks, not to show you that we've got lots of Chromebooks, but to talk about Chromebook Plus, this new thing from Google that is basically saying, hey, look, we're going to create a new Chromebook category that guarantees you better speeds, better hardware, better experiences overall. And I've got some that are labeled Chromebook Plus that are actual new Chromebook Plus hardware. I've got some that are not labeled Chromebook Plus, but are still going to get all the same Chromebook Plus goodies. There's a lot to talk about. I'm not going to review all these things. I'm not going to go through everything. I just want to give you a general idea in this video about what you can start to expect as we start to see Chromebook Plus models rolling out. Now, I don't want to get lost in like what Chromebook Plus is. We made a whole video about that. You can go check uh, the link in the description, go to our YouTube page and see that stuff. But I wanted to show you some of the actual hardware. Now we had B-roll of some of it and all that kind of stuff uh, from the event. And we brought these devices uh, back with us. And what I've got here is like a mix of Chromebook Plus devices. So uh, for instance, this is the Asus Chromebook Plus. Uh, and I've got my list over here just to make sure I say these model names right. The Asus uh, Chromebook Plus CX34. So um, you see it's got Chromebook Plus right there at the top. Um, I love this new logo. I think this looks really cool. And on all new Chromebook Plus models moving forward, they'll have that on there. But in the same vein, I've got this device here, which is the Lenovo Chromebook um, Slim 3i. And we've done a whole video about this device already. We actually, right before the event, published uh, a video talking about how we thought that this was probably a Chromebook Plus model. It turned out that it is. Uh, and, and obviously they'll start shipping one that says Chromebook Plus up here instead of this. They had one on the floor there. Uh, but that doesn't change anything about this Chromebook. So I wanna make that clear to begin with. So this device and the one that will have Chromebook Plus up here will be no different. They'll be the exact same Chromebook. It'll just be a little bit of a logo change because what's gonna happen is a, a long list, and we've got that, we'll link that in the description as well. Uh, it'll be in the post that, that we put with this video, but we've also talked about it at chromebox.com. Um, there's a big list of devices that meet all the, the specifications for Chromebook Plus, stuff like you know the, the right processor, eight or more gigs of RAM, uh, 128 or more gigs of storage, 1080p screen or better, 1080p webcam or better with temporal noise reduction. So if, if it meets those things, then that device is gonna get all the Chromebook Plus goodie bag, basically, as these new features roll out, these devices will get it. So just because there's no Chromebook Plus up here on this guy, uh, that doesn't mean that this one's not gonna get the Chromebook Plus stuff. It'll get all the same stuff uh, that the, the one that's branded Chromebook Plus will get. So now that we got that cleared up and out of the way, um, I just wanna kind of show you some of these devices because there are some common threads that, that kind of weave through all of them. And the first up is like a better attention to build quality. That doesn't mean the materials are all like top notch. It's not like we're dealing with all aluminum chassis here and everything's glass and it's, you know, thousand dollar Chromebook land. It's not, it's a lot of plastic to be honest with you. And I've said this a hundred times if I've said it once, I'm okay with plastic. I'm okay with there being plastic in Chromebooks. That's fine. Just make sure that it's rigid plastic. And while not all of the Chromebook Plus models quite have that nailed down, uh, for the most part, they, they're kind of getting this part right. And so you've got like this CX-34 thing that is just absolutely rigid. And I don't think, yeah, this is plastic on top too. So, I mean, it is rigid. And when I open it up and hold it here, it is very rigid. I mean, it's moving a little bit, but this thing feels good when you pick it up. It's light, um, you know, and, and the overall build quality of it feels like it's not going to fall apart in your hands. I will say it's not quite as good as the Slim 3i uh, Chromebook Plus that is absolutely rigid, rigid. Now, even when I have it open this way, I mean, there's just no flex in this thing. It is so good, so well built and all plastic on the bottom. So uh, again, there is definitely room for Chromebooks that have a lot of plastic in them that are nice and rigid. So if we look at, say, another Chromebook that's gonna be in the Chromebook Plus family devices, it's not labeled that way yet, the Vero 514, same thing. All plastic, recycled plastic even, nice and rigid. You open it up, it doesn't feel flimsy, it doesn't have a lot of deflection. Uh, the trackpad feels nice and seated, it's not clicking as I, as I wrench on the device. Uh, same goes for this, the uh, Acer Chromebook 514 GE. The lightest big Chromebook I've ever picked up. It does have an aluminum lid, but when I open it up, this part in here is plastic. Uh, it's got an aluminum bottom on it, but it's firm, super duper rigid, and feels really good when you pick it up. And 
So you're noticing a pattern here. I don't want to say that every Chromebook Plus has that um, going on with it. We've talked about this, the HP uh, X360 14C. This is the regular one, not the one branded Chromebook Plus, but they're literally the exact same thing. And while the top end of this thing is super rigid, the bottom has, to me, too much flex in it. Um, it's not a game, like a, a deal breaker, um, uh, but it. I wish they would have fixed that. Then you turn around and the CM34 goes back to being nice and rigid and firm, but it's kind of chunky. Um, so you're picking up on this pattern here, like. These aren't the most, you know, proficiently built devices. It's not like all of these feel like the HP uh, Chromebook Pro, um, uh, Dragonfly Pro. I'm sorry, uh, they don't they don't feel like that necessarily, but they feel good in the hand. Um, you know, here's the Acer, nice and firm. This is the new Flex uh, Chromebook Plus from Lenovo, the Flex 5i, nice and firm. A 15.6 inch one from HP. Again, I pick them up, and I'm not feeling a bunch a bunch of you know, squishiness and, and bending going on in the chassis. And while that's not a spec that Google said, hey, you have to make sure that you have zero deflection in your chassis, it's nice to see that most of these Chromebooks kind of have that going on. Now, the, the bottom halves are not all as firm as, as one another, but for the most part, I feel like the build quality here is pretty good across the board. And then we need to talk about displays. So um, I'm going to grab this one. So this is the HP X360 uh, 14C. It's the 2023 model, and it is the one that will get the Chromebook Plus label on it. Um, make sure I got battery on this one as it comes up here. Okay, so this one's uh, loading up. This is a 250 nit screen. We get we get uh, angry with HP for continuing to put 250 nit screens in, but I have to say this, like this screen. Let me make sure Joe's cool with this exposure. Good there. So this screen, even though it's 250 nits, like judging screen brightness is difficult because even if the, the display is actually putting out X amount of nits, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what's hitting your eyes. There's all these different things that come into the way that light rolls off before it gets to your face. And for whatever reason, the 250 nits on this, even though I read that on a spec sheet, was like, oh God, not again. It's pretty good. Um, it's You can tell when it's under my display, for instance, on the desk, that it's not quite as bright as my, my big display. But overall, I've not been that disappointed with this, and I found that to be true of all of these. So there are quite a few of these devices that have 250 nit screens. I think the Asus is 300, uh, this Lenovo is 300 or 350, it's very good. This Acer's 350. This Acer here, I think is, uh, it's a 250 nit screen as well. Uh, and it's, it uses anti-glare to kind of help make the overall screen look a little bit better. And so, you know, uh, this one might be dead. but. You get my point. Uh, the The screens aren't necessarily all like 500 nit screens. Again, we're not talking about a, a segment of Chromebooks that are wildly overpriced and have the highest end specs in the market. But what I found is I've messed with all of these, even though there might be 250 nit models in here, the 250 nits are good 250 nits, if that makes sense. Like I've opened every one of them up and used them by a window and gone, eh, this isn't too bad. And so I feel like, again, even though screen brightness right now is not a Chromebook Plus specification, I feel like Google was uh, a little choosy whenever they were deciding which ones were gonna kind of get this label and made sure that those screens look good. They're obviously 1080p, that's the spec they have to meet, but they all also look very good. They're all IPS, that's also the spec. But I've seen 1080p IPS screens at 250 nits that just don't look great. They look super dull and dim, and just none of these have that quality about them. And then when we talk about you know deflection and all that kind of stuff, let me get actually one that's a Chromebook Plus. Here we go. Uh, we got to talk about keyframe because the the bottom part of the chassis, even if it's rigid, if the keyframes feel cheap and gross. Uh, you don't want to type on it. It doesn't matter how rigid the thing is if the keyframe feels bad. And it's another thing I've found about these devices is that the, overall the keyframes feel good. Um, again, they're not world class. I wouldn't put them up against maybe a MacBook or against the Dragonfly Pro Chromebook, but the keyframes feel good. They don't all have backlight. Uh, that's just, that's not part of the spec. I kind of wish that was a Chromebook Plus spec, but they don't all have backlighting, but they all feel good. And, and even if there's a, like this chassis has a tad bit of give, you can see around the keyframe here, the keyframe feels good. Like there's a great amount of travel and click, uh, and it doesn't feel like the key caps are wobbling all over the place. And so, that's an important part of the overall Chromebook experience. Additionally, you know, the track pads on all these, like this one feels like, 
if it's not glass, that's fooling me. Um, this one feels glass, but all the trackpads feel really good. They feel seated. They feel nice and smooth. They feel nice and clicky. They feel considered. Again, this is not a Chromebook Plus spec. Google has not said, hey, your, your trackpad has to be this good. I don't even know how they would do that. Uh, but all the ones that I've tested, all the ones that I've messed with, they all have good trackpads. And additionally, the speakers on most of these Chromebook Plus models have been pretty awesome too. The, the only exception to that rule is probably my favorite of these new devices, which would be the Slim 3i. Uh, the speakers aren't bad per se on this device, but you can see the speaker grills are pretty tiny down there and it, it doesn't have the best sound. It's not the worst by any uh, stretch of the imagination. It's just okay. But devices like the CX-34 uh, have great speakers. Uh, this HP, this newest HP has great speakers. I think we talked about that in the unboxing of that device. Uh, the Asus CM34 has really good speakers as well. So, I mean, you see a trend here. Uh, even the Acer here that's got these upward firing, they're nice and crisp sounding. Um, you know, we've got lots of good speakers going on here. And that, that makes sense. Again, even though this isn't a spec thing, hopefully Google had some say in some of these things of being like, look, you can't ship a big Chromebook with big speaker grills and have the speakers just sound like trash. Let's make sure those speakers sound good. And then hopefully, Eventually, the Chromebook Plus name will mean you also have to have good speakers. If we're going to keep putting that on there, you got to have good speakers to go along with that good screen and that good keyframe and that good trackpad. And obviously, once you get on the inside of these things, they all have to have a certain spec of processor. So we don't have to pick up any of these Chromebooks and worry, like, is it going to perform well? Yeah, they're all going to perform well. They're all going to handle this new Photoshop on the web just fine. They're all going to handle video editing with LumaFusion just fine. They're going to handle, you know, uh, web, uh, web hosted, uh, game streaming services like GeForce now just fine. Like every one of them is kind of the, a pleasure to use because you don't have to worry about performance whatsoever. And now all of a sudden you don't have to worry about screen resolutions, not matching up and you don't have to worry about non IPS screens. And wait, you don't have to worry about having like crummy build quality and, and, and you got good webcams going along with all that kind of stuff. And so, all of a sudden you start adding all this stuff up and you start seeing why it is, uh, I think that Google's doing all this. Now we have, a, I have a pile of Chromebooks here and I could tell you, Hey, look through these, you know, choose the one. Do you want a bigger one or a smaller one? Do you, do you really prefer having one that's like a little bit thinner or, or not? Or, you know, do you like the port selection on that one or this one? And then you're making your buying decision on that instead of wondering like, God, is this going to have enough Ram or is that the right model? Is that the model that said it had eight gigs of Ram or am I going to get one with four? You don't have to worry about all that stuff. Knowing that it's a Chromebook plus model takes all of that worry away and you can start really looking at Chromebooks uh, in a little different light where you can decide like, you know, what port selection do I like? Do I like the color of this one? You know, do I, this one's too thick. I don't, I don't care for this one. I like how thin this one is. And well, maybe the ports are a little bit different, but I'd rather have a thin Chromebook than one with all the ports on it. And so those become buying decisions instead of like, oh God, is this processor going to be able to do the things I need it to do? And so finally, before I wrap all this up again, we're going to do reviews and, and stuff with all these Chromebooks. It's a lot of Chromebooks. If I went through every single piece of hardware that uh, Google has provided for us to look at, we would be here for hours on end. And so we, each of these Chromebooks deserves some time in front of the camera all on its own. Uh, but I do want to show you this really cool thing. I want to make sure that this one's got, actually, I'm going to show you on the Acer because I know, or the Asus, I'm sorry. I know that I charged it up. I want to show you what the, uh, this new uh, login screen looks like. That is not the one I was going to use. This is what happens when you have so many Chromebooks. Uh, one of these have got my, oh, this one's it. Okay, so this is the Lenovo Flex 5i Chromebook. Again, this one has uh, um, upward firing speaker ports and the speakers are pretty nice on it. Uh, what is Lenovo's thing? Wave? Uh, or no, Max Audio. Oh, dang it. I gotta, I gotta turn it off and do it again. So Chromebook plus is going to get all kinds of new software stuff. So there's, you know, there's things we're going to kind of go into depth on, uh, as we start talking about these devices, you know, there's the new software for the, for the, uh, Google meet and zoom applications where you can control your camera settings and stuff. But this is a good taste. I think this boot up screen of the difference in attention to detail from a software perspective that Google's going to give, uh, Chromebook plus so hopefully Hopefully this won't be blown out whenever it comes up. You're going to see all this stuff swirl in here. That's a nice touch. And you know, the, the out of box experience, again, we will get into in more depth, uh, in the, in the coming weeks for sure. Uh, and talk about all the different things that Chromebook plus has to offer over just kind of a standard Chromebook. And you know, 
The cool part is the other pile that was over here that aren't labeled Chromebook Plus or aren't new, um, those devices in two weeks are going to get all the Chromebook Plus stuff. So if it if it qualifies as Chromebook Plus, those will all be on the kind of on the same level uh, within just a couple weeks. And then on October eighth, you're going to be able to buy all eight of these new Chromebook Plus models at Best Buy stores, Amazon, Walmart, Target, and all that kind of stuff. So. We're excited, obviously, about this. Um, there's a lot to explore. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to learn about Chromebook Plus. Um, but yeah, the, the hardware is off to a really great start. And again, uh, we're gonna do videos about these devices uh, individually so that you can kind of see them and, and still make purchasing decisions based on those opinions. But I wanted to show you kind of all of them. Like, look at what Chromebook Plus looks like as a whole. Uh, it's impressive. I think Google's doing a really cool thing here, especially in a three to $550 price category to get this kind of hardware for those kind of prices. And that's MSRP. These are Chromebooks, so they'll probably be on sale too. Uh, that's It's a really cool thing. And, and we're impressed with this. We're excited about it. We're still kind of learning uh, all the ins and outs of Chromebook Plus as well. But uh, that's it for this one. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.